Jeff Ward, our first Be Inspired speaker, he's a serial entrepreneur. He has launched a variety of businesses. He's the founder and CEO of Animikit Indigenous Technology, founded in 2003. He has been its CEO since the beginning. Animiki is the first indigenous-owned B Corp in Canada. Um, I'm originally from Manitoba. On my father's side, I'm Ojibwe and Métis. And on my mother's side, my settler heritage is English and Ukrainian. Uh, I am an entrepreneur and founder of Animiki Indigenous Technology which uh, helps indigenous-focused organizations uh, leverage technology for equitable outcomes for indigenous peoples. So today I'm here to share, uh, talk a little bit about social uh, entrepreneurship and social enterprise and really the cutting edge latest and greatest stuff. And really it's only been around for 10 or 20,000 years. <laughs> so the reason we start events like this with a territory acknowledgement is that it's a simple and straightforward way to acknowledge those that have come before us and uh, to be mindful that people have been uh, living and thriving here on these traditional lands for millennia. And it's through uh, inventions and innovations and technologies that Indigenous peoples have been able to thrive uh, for so long. And uh, you know, some people may think of Indigenous peoples as a thing of the past. Um, but I can assure you that we're still here innovating on these territories uh, with thriving business, creating, yes, even new technologies. Um, so the history of this country, Canada, has largely left out uh, the Indigenous experience and Indigenous uh, voices and worldview. Uh, the true history of Canada is not what most Canadian kids uh, learned in school. And now through this era of reconciliation and coming together again, um, those voices are uh, being amplified and heard loud and clear. And Canada's creation story uh, is being rewritten almost in real time. Uh, Toronto and, uh, was a meeting place for commerce historically. Through, this is where trade routes for, for example, uh, the fur trade came through, right? Uh, this city and this country was founded on entrepreneurship and uh, relationships between indigenous peoples and uh, the settlers. And you know, as soon as we found out that we could sell our stuff to the settlers, we were in business and exporting our stuff globally. Apparently, our rodents were the talk of the town over in Europe. Um, we didn't really see the appeal, but there's business opportunity there. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, Canada's history, this year we're celebrating uh, 150 years of um, confederation and you know we're still living through this part of history and it's not over yet and you know Canadians still don't know uh, this history and let alone understand an entire continent of indigenous lived experiences I'm not even gonna mention we've been here longer than 150 years oh I, I was gonna take that slide out <laughs> Um, so I told you at the beginning that uh, I'm mixed Indigenous and uh, European ancestry. So I think a lot about worldviews and even sort of reconciling uh, in my own self uh, what that sort of means. Um, so innovations and inventions, even our businesses are sort of filtered through um, this Indigenous worldview, Indigenous ways of knowing and being that maybe are a little bit different than uh, Western worldviews. So I can't uh, explain entire worldview in one slide, but uh, one thing I'm gonna um, pull out is concepts, indigenous concepts of uh, wealth and generosity. So um, in Western worldview, you know, the more um, wealth people accumulate, the more status we give people, um, more status you get sort of thing. And within the indigenous cultures and communities, it's totally the opposite. The more wealth that you, uh, uh, that you, you gain, the more you give away, and uh, really is uh, demonstrated uh, through gift-giving ceremonies. Historically, has been um, through gift-giving ceremonies, for example, like the potlatch or uh, in giveaways. Now, in this country, the potlatch and ceremonies, and actually many ceremonies, were just outright banned in this country. 
So uh, you just could not practice these if you were indigenous. So, um, you know, imagine uh, being thrown in jail for giving gifts at Christmas time, for example. It's kind of ridiculous, right? And, well, in fact, many indigenous people would hold their gift giving ceremonies around Christmas time as like a loophole. But still, uh, indigenous people were arrested uh, for these practices. And really, it's only for the strength and resilience of those indigenous people to carry on these traditions in secret and, and in hiding uh, that these carry on today. The potlatch ban and, and many ceremonial bans were only lifted in 1951. So uh, that's just one example of how uh, the Canadian government systematically targeted a value system of generosity. And guess what, folks? It didn't work. <laughs> So within the indigenous entrepreneur uh, community, I see generosity as a major theme in how business is conducted. Um, you know, many indigenous businesses have already giving back uh, programs baked into uh, their business and uh, into their operating structure um, and don't necessarily need to wear the title social enterprise because uh, to many indigenous entrepreneurs, it's just enterprise, it's just good business. So um, indigenous business is booming in Canada um, and uh, you know, still, it's still the way forward for um, economic development. Um, indigenous people are more likely to start a business than uh, non-indigenous Canadians and uh, indigenous business profits and profit growth are growing at rates faster than um, the national average. What's even more is indigenous women are outperforming men in business. <laughs> And, and why, why is that? So, you know, I think it's a good question. And um, I, I think it's back to worldview, indigenous worldview. So indigenous cultures and societies are largely matriarchal uh, in, in nature. And uh, I think that has something, <laughs> something to do with it. It's uh, respect for women is, is within the fabric of our societies. So B Corp and many other social entrepreneurs have been using uh, business as a force for good, which is great, it's awesome, very, very commendable. But we also know that it's, it's just good business and uh, businesses with a social mission are also very successful, right? And uh, one of the reasons why many large corporations even have a CSR focus because they know their financial bottom line is going to do better. So it's no surprise to me that indigenous business is booming in Canada and profits and profit growth are outperforming national averages. Um, B Corp has gone far, social entrepreneurs have gone far, but we can go farther, we can go farther together. Um, talking about uh, B Corp's creation story, for example, uh, we're celebrating 10 years, which is very awesome, but really, uh, you know, what does uh, this movement and social entrepreneur movement um, look like in 2030 and in 2130? So I'd like to challenge all of you here today to look to the original innovators, uh, inventors, and entrepreneurs of these lands, uh, uh, indigenous peoples who have survived and thrived on, on ex these exact lands, and indigenous communities throughout the world. I guarantee that your businesses, our countries, and our global community will be more successful for it. Thank you. Miigwech. <laughs>